Welcome back to the Voice of Uyghur. I am Attila Uyghur. And I am Merahan Uyghur. In today's program, we were supposed to talk about why the world leading powers should support East Turkestan's independence. But due to the current situation, we are changing our program to the most necessary topic. Today, as an Uyghur American, we want to plead the world leaders, economists, investors, politicians, and all of humanity to support Uyghurs and to recognize East Turkestan as a sovereign nation occupied by China. We want all democratic countries to take the necessary steps based on the international law to punish China for committing the worst genocide crime against humanity of the 21st century. Especially if you are Uyghur, you should be contacting your local government, your congressmen, your senators, your neighbors, your friends, you name it. Anyone you can think of, you should be asking them to support East Turkestan independence. Uyghurs shouldn't be able to be relaxed right now at a time like this. We should take every opportunity we get to fight for East Turkestan independence. Enough is enough. We need to stand up against China's communist regime. Currently, China has locked up more than 3 million people in Nazi-style concentration camps across East Turkestan to brainwash them and convert them into Chinese. They have spent billions of dollars and set up worldwide high-tech propaganda networks to control the entire world's media. It is a well-known fact that the communist government has been implementing vicious methods to torture the people of East Turkestan by falsely accusing them as terrorists or religious extremists. As a matter of fact, the people of East Turkestan are one of the most peaceful ethnic groups on earth. Over the last 70 years, since the communist China's brutal occupation of East Turkestan, China has never changed its discriminatory policies toward the people of East Turkestan. This has resulted in China exploiting not only East Turkestan's natural resources, but also have committed execution, brutal torture, gang rapes, mass imprisonment without judicial trial, high-tech surveillance, orphanage conversion facilities, forced sterilization, persecution of intellectuals, live human harvesting, human organ harvesting, and mass scale internment camps to ordinary citizens of East Turkestan. China has been systematically destroying the culture, language, history, religion, architecture, literature, and altering the minds of East Turkestan. It has been continuously violating the Universal Declarations of Human Rights, UN Treaties, and above all, the UN Genocide Convention, ratified on December 9, 1948, that was signed by 150 nations. Since 2014, the Chinese government, led by President Xi Jinping, openly ordered its Communist Party members to systematically destroy and eradicate any dissident elements by labeling them as religious extremists, separatists, and terrorists. The CCP openly challenged the United Nations by ignoring all legitimate demands from the international community to shut down the concentration camps, respect basic human rights of East Turkestan people, and provide a necessary communication channel for international investigators to monitor the grave human rights violation faced by the people of East Turkestan. As you might know by now, tens of millions of people in East Turkestan live under China's tyrannical regime without any voice in the international community. Millions of them are suffering in concentration camps while their children are being incarcerated in orphanage schools Hundreds of thousands of women become hostages of male Chinese officials, and some of them are even forced to marry Chinese. Forced sterilization and abortion are widespread all across, all across East Turkestan. Hundreds of thousands of prisoners were congregated to form human organ banks to sell for profit in the international organ transfer market. Muslims, Christians, and any other religions are deprived of rights to pray and follow religious doctrine. On, to on top of all, China has built up the, a worldwide high-tech spying network to monitor every member of the East Turkestan exiled community. 
Due to above concerns, we respectfully request all democratic countries take immediate and decisive action to punish China for committing the worst genocide crime of the 21st century. All democratic nations on earth have the responsibility to save the people of East Turkestan being eradicated from the face of the earth. The people of East Turkestan have suffered more than enough for the civilized world to stand by and watch. All people of East Turkestan want to restore the independence of East Turkestan. The world can no longer keep silent on a legitimate demand for freedom. Otherwise, the whole world would be eventually ruled by the most vicious and bloodthirsty China's Communist Party. The biggest blow to China would be the world leading powers openly recognizing East Turkestan as a nation occupied by China. People of East Turkestan are in desperate need of your help. The United States of America and all other democratic countries must take decisive action to punish China's brutal fascist regime so the world doesn't re-experience another Nazi regime. Remember, East Turkestan is like a wall blocking China's expansion to the world. If East Turkestan does not become independent, not only will China's neighboring countries be in danger, but the world will be in danger. Some media and news channels need to stop calling East Turkestan as Xinjiang, because when you call it Xinjiang, you are using Chinese propaganda and you are not helping East Turkestan, you are helping China. Why can Steve Bannon call it East Turkestan? but other individuals and media channels can't. Unfortunately, there are a handful of oilers that call themselves oiler activists and they don't even correct a news anchor when they use the term Xinjiang. How do you just stand there while someone is calling East Turkestan as Xinjiang? It's being held. Your sister and your aunt you say were abducted um, you, you, you fear that they could be held in one of these detention camps in Xinjiang. China calls them vocational learning centers, re-education centers. Uh, from what you've heard, how would you describe them? Well, unfortunately, that's my fear, probably being held in one of those modern-day concentration camps. They are calling, the Chinese government is calling, they are vocational training centers. But my sister is a medical doctor. She doesn't need any vocational training. She doesn't do anything to correct what the anchor says. Even when news anchors ask them if Uyghurs want independence, these Uyghurs answer no without even thinking about who they are representing. And do the Uyghurs want independence for Xinjiang? The Uyghur people's priority or major concern right now is to how to live like a human being, whether in China or outside of China. So you're not striving for independence? Want, that's what the Chinese claim that the Uyghurs are uh, fighting for. But the most pressing issue at the moment is the survival, the existential threat, existential threat that the Chinese government posing against the Uyghur people. But Uyghur people historically have been demanding and asking for political autonomy, social freedom, and, and the freedom to live with dignity for many years. Yeah, no, it's okay. Thank you. Hiya. And to the These kinds of Uyghurs will never represent the Uyghur nation. These kinds of Uyghurs are okay with living with China because their mentality is already integrated with Chinese. Since they have this mentality, they don't care if you call it East Turkestan or Xinjiang. If you look at some of these Uyghurs' family members or ancestors, they used to work for China's government, and maybe some of these Uyghurs still work for the Chinese government today. The world has been able to look away from what has been going on inside of China. But now from the China virus, everyone knows how much of a threat China is to the world. China virus has killed more people in the U.S. than 9-11, the bombing of Pearl Harbor, and the Vietnam War combined. We can't keep avoiding what's happening on in China. We have to act up now for the world's safety. We must punish China for the damage they have done to the world. 
and we want to let the whole world know that all Uyghurs worldwide are completely ready to die fighting for East Turkestan. But we need international support, we need military support, and we need economic support. We need the world's help to take down China's communist regime and restore East Turkestan. Thank you for watching. Uh, we want to show you a little bit of clips, a few clips. I just think this is a crisis of historic proportion. They're going to look back at this in a hundred years from now about how everybody behaved. It is time the financial world, we have to force the business world, we have to force the media world, we have to force the political world. They must be forced to look at the CCP for exactly what it is. For too many years, they've been able to look away from about organ harvesting. They've been able to look away what happened to the Tibetan Buddhists and the Dalai Lama. They didn't been able to look away what happened in East Turkestan to the Uyghurs. They didn't been able to look away at the suppression of the underground Christian church. They've been able to look away to what's happened to the Falun Gong. They've been able to look away and can make it.